Portuguese. Portuguese? Wow. wow. <laughs> Should get it. <laughs> Gotta get this. How was Mexico? Pretty insane. Pretty insane. Yeah, I got a lot of Mexico. Yeah. yeah, I was uh, waiting for every bus you put out there. Like, yeah, oh, it was a funny winter. They didn't get a ton of swell, but I, I definitely like. like Damn, there's like another point break. All right, let's just about this. Yeah. And it's gonna be hard to go back to beach breaks. Very <laughs> 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 spoiled. But yeah. Awesome. Welcome yeah, back. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you came back safe. And, yeah, thank uh, you. One piece. <laughs> yeah. My car is not one piece, but I'm here and everything's good. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happened to your car? Um, like a fuel system problem in Arkansas. Oh, gotcha, so I was yeah. stuck there for like nine days thinking that it would be fixed and then it didn't get fixed. I rented a U Haul and drove home. <laughs> so my van's still in Arkansas. Oh, it's insane. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, figure well, it out. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, so welcome to Skipper Surf Review. I'm here at Glide Surf Shop in Asbury Park, New Jersey with Phil, um, the owner of Glide. Yeah. And um, we came out here to check out the boards, what they have in stock. Uh, all the boards are hand-shaped uh, from Trimcraft, uh, from yeah. Tim Phillips, uh, and we're gonna see more. All right, yeah. Phil, uh, could you please show us like what boards are the most popular now on the market? Like what people are asking, like when they come in, like, hey, do you have this particular one? Or uh, what would you recommend for the, um, you know, I guess summer uh, that is approaching? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I think probably the most popular thing we sell is, are these guys. Um, I only have one in stock alone, it's like kind of flying off the shelves a bit, but we're working on a bunch now. It's uh, the Trimcraft Haley Pin, which is kind of a, Trimcraft version of um, Ryan Lovelace's Stay Lizzy. Yeah. Um, they're cool. They're like really easy to ride for anyone. And I think they can kind of really, um, they transcend different skill levels. Mm -hmm. So uh, for like a beginner kind of thing, they're really cool because they paddle well, they're stable, um, they catch waves really easily. And then for a guy who's a bit better of a surfer, um, they have pretty like dynamic bottom contours. Mm -hmm. So you, they, they turn over really quick and you really kind of surf them as opposed to like, Something that's just more basic and go straight. I mean, yeah, you've I, written a thick with you. I, I, I yeah. have 710, yeah, and, and that one is amazing. I, it's it, it's even it's kind of big, like a 710, but as soon as you step back, it, it, it doesn't feel like that. We have like a lot of uh, oh. like and it's board, it feels like way smaller. It's that whole like triplane bottom, so it's got those kind of bevels on the rails that, um, similar to what like a wing does, it gives you a pivot point that's a bit further forward, so your turnover from like rail to rail is way quicker. Yeah. So and they're really, really like refined and they're yeah. not like a really yeah. chunky beefy. It's kind of like chunky throughout since it's really high in the water so it goes over the top really well and everything, but then yeah, the, the, the rails themselves are uh, yeah, they're pretty dynamic and refined and cool. Yeah, love it. It's my uh, favorite. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I think like it would probably, if I had one board, I would go with that one. Yeah. Uh, because I've been spending more time in the water on the Thick Lazy. Um, uh, but I never actually uh, walked off the Haley Pin. Why did I Yeah, yeah, tell totally. it, pull it out. Let me, uh, let me move this guy. I mean, inherently, they're the same surfboard. Um, the idea of Trimcraft from its inception was that Ryan Lovelace, would, or whoever the shaper was of that model, would work with um, kind of these younger guys and teach them how to like perfectly shape his version. Um, John Simon's been working with Ryan, since he was 14 years old, he's 21 now. Um, so he's he's probably you know the closest perfect replica but it's probably from John Simon just because he sees he's with Ryan so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is on seven two. Wow. Yeah, I mean Ryan was last like in California. Uh, I guess it, it, it's it's got different last. Like I think it was uh, what they call it. Um, this is the sand. Oh, sand. Yeah, this is a sand finish. And that one was... Uh, sand and glass, maybe? Uh, glass. Yeah. yeah, glass finish. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Feels good. Yeah. 
They're cool. And the smaller ones just end up being like, you know, slightly more high performance, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, they have so much kind of through here um, that they really do pad well. So you, you still have something that's like, you can grovel in little waves on the thing. Um, it just moves a bit more yeah. than something longer would be. Where is family going and the uh, overall shape? Yeah. 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 And they go from like seven foot to, we've done them like 11 two as long as we've done them. Like they'll go, they'll become a full glider, which is kind of pretty <laughs> it incredible. Is better, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a 10 one Dick Lizzie that I ride a bunch. It's like a 10, 10 one, yeah. Wow. It's just like a motivational thing. Wait, you know, you know <laughs> yeah. and like, and it's warm. I'm like, well, I should probably surf, or I'll go paddle for a mile and try to surf between, you know what I mean? A long paddle kind of thing. Uh -huh. They're fun. <laughs> Are there any uh, more boards coming uh, or any Philippines? Yeah, we have a ton sitting in the shop right now. There's probably like another eight or ten that are sitting over there. I was just waiting to finish. I mean, like that's the thing with, with what we do, 99% of it. Um, we're producing ourselves at our factory, the Heavens. Um, so there's always 40, 50 boards in the works at all times kind of thing. John Simon, who shaped this, who flew in from Ventura on Monday, is actually over there shaping, he'll probably shape like 45 boards before he leaves. Mm -hmm. And then Josh Peterson comes back from Hawaii in the beginning of May. So there's like a constant rotation, constant rotation. Of, of someone in there doing a bunch of cool stuff. It's great. Keeps uh, fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, where else we have here? I'll show you some of the ones that I've been riding the most. It's kind of really been blowing my mind. Um, I brought like a bunch of boards to Mexico with me, of course, because it's kind of my R&D kind of session thing. Um, and one of the boards I brought was one of these from Josh Peterson. Um, Josh spent a bunch of time with Rich Pavel last year in Hawaii and when Rich was here a couple years ago um, and they kind of really hit it off. So this is kind of based off of Pavel's speed dialer. Um, the speed dialer, I guess in Pavel's words, is kind of like the most modern interpretation of like a, of a classic fish, right? Mm -hmm. So take all the really cool fish aspects of a surfboard um, and bring it into the 21st century kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a double wing, quad, concave deck. Kind of V entry to, I think spiral V through the tail. I don't know the exact bottom contours, but, um, and they're pretty narrow, right? So, so it's five, nine, 19 and three quarters by two and a quarter, mm -hmm. which is super thin, but because the, um, the deck's concave, so it's just really thin in the center. So the sensitivity in your feet is like really cool. Yeah. Um, this was like my kind of go-to. I kind of two boards that I wrote it every day in Mexico kind of thing. And I have a 5.8 version of this that was just insane. Um, all that fishy flow that you want, um, but you can square off a lot more, like a lot more high performance. Um, the double wing kind of gives like a cool break. So it's, um, it pivots a bit more on your backhand. It's a lot better. I think mm -hmm. sometimes fish on your backhand are pretty hard to ride. Yeah. Um, but kind of narrowing the tail and putting that double bump in there, um, it just lets it want to go a bit more vertical. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, super cool. Did you go with just quad or? Yeah, quad so I, I was quad and I ran like a version of Pavel Speed Dialer Fins, which the Speed Dialer Fin is the first like, Pavel designed it and it's kind of a, um, like a split keel. There's mm -hmm. a couple other fins that have come out since then, but it's literally if you took a keel fin, mm -hmm. just kind of cut it down the center and made two fins out of it, it was like a split keel design. And mm -hmm. it's super cool. It's got a bit of a cutaway on the back and it's uh, super responsive, really fast, it's really cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really fun. And it's, it's chime. Yeah. It's, it's so deceiving, right? Because it yeah. says it's two and a quarter in the center, but it's got kind of all this in the rail through here, so they give you all this paddle ability. Good volume. In the top. Yeah, but tons of volume. Easy, easy early entrance. Oh, they're all. And it goes all the way up to the tail. Totally. But it doesn't feel like it's a big chunky thing. That it doesn't feel. No. Because well, like, where you're standing in the center, mm -hmm. um, you're really close to the water. You know what I mean? Two and a quarter is pretty thin. We're going to. Mess it a little bit in my next one, try to do maybe like two or just under two in the center of the thing. So you have five feet. Uh, and then what's your, what's your weight? 160 pounds? Which five feet for a fish for me is like kind of long, really. Mm -hmm. um, I think for like the point breaks I was serving, it felt good because I liked a bit more rail line, mm -hmm. those kind of waves. I think for here on the next iteration we'll do, um, we'll probably go down to like five, six. Or six. six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't feel like that. You have to shoot your. Uh, feed the, like all and off, like it's it's more forgiving, right? In terms of like, for sure, it just uh, it, like yeah distribution of the uh, volume like all across. The yeah, field. absolutely. Yeah, and for me, I just need a little bit more weight. You know what I mean? If it was like this big, it, it felt a little bit long in the rail. 
but when it was this big, it felt insane, you know? Um, pretty cool. And it's eight times flat. Yeah. Full color, so if it was clear, you'd take like 100 bucks off that, it's like 75, you know? Wow. That's great. They're fun. We had a three pack in, but they sold pretty quick. Okay, uh, we're going to locals buy it, uh, local, a uh, local's board spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to load the board. But if it can go as well, <laughs> we'll come back. Alright, and, and, and if it's gone by the time you're done, you're ready. Um, <laughs> John, like I said, Josh will be back, we'll just get you custom done. It's crazy. It's, it's definitely a cool nice. They're cool, man. They, they were like, he kind of shaped it for me. Like, I didn't even really ask him. He just was here and he's like, oh, I made your board. Now it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> and then I didn't, I was like, cool, like, I have a bunch of fishes. I guess, you know, it something different would be cool. And then I wrote it and I was like, oh, wait a second. Like, there's something really special about this thing, and then I kind of couldn't get off of it, you know? Where would it sit between, I would say, uh, like a big fish, like a small, tiny fish, like a real yeah. wide, and then, and then wheels, would it sit in between, or do you think above the wheels fish? Maybe above the wheels fish, it's slightly different. I feel like um, the wheels fish is more, like has a slightly more high performance kind of slant to it, or aspect to it, where this, I think, is like slightly more classic fishing. Classic. It's hard to like compare. Yeah, They're not apples yeah, 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 You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is definitely more high performance than a, than a classic fish, but it, it also like feels slightly more fishy, maybe than those fish does. You know? Mm -hmm. More like a down the line. And totally. Yeah. I love yeah. this like quick and response. Yeah, I think as what as makes well. the Will's fish so great is that it has all that curvy outline and it's really small, so it has this really small, nimble kind of feeling. Where this, um, it's still nimble, but it has a slightly more parallel fishy projection. You know, I feel like the most classic fishes are going to want to project really like parallel kind of down the line, right? They're all like kind of made for speed and flow. And then you can take something like the Will's fish, which is like almost the opposite of that. It's all curvy and really yeah. wants to be like kind of pushed. So this, I guess, falls in that center between the two. Um, but still really high performance for what it is, I guess. All right, so I have 5'9 Will's fish, yeah. which is like around 34 liters. Yeah. Uh, and this one might be yeah, this might would well overlap a little bit in some ways, but it yeah. could, could probably go on the smaller days too. Yeah. I think so, yeah. But maybe it, it may be even better when it gets better, you know what I mean? It's got the rougher too. It does, yeah. You do? Yeah, a, a, a pretty good amount of rocker. I love tail rocker too, especially with like the bottom contours. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The deck's a bit flatter, so I think it's, it's... A lot of times we look at boards and we're like, oh, that looks really flat. But then like, you look at the deck and you go, oh, that looks really flat. And then you look at the bottom and it's got a lot of curve to it, so it's like... That's kind of just a, I guess a way, you know, a way to add volume is keeping that deck really flat. You know what I mean? So like, rather than have the deck rocker match the bottom rocker, you kind of keep that flat through here. And it just adds all this like kind of paddle power through, through the top of the board. Right, that's good. Hidden volume. That's you what we want, want, right? Yeah. We all want to ride these tiny little things, but like sometimes a little extra volume. These are the tr tricks, and then they they, they they help you too. To score more waves, mm -hmm. right, and not struggle. Catch more waves, and then I think just have a little bit more flow too. You know, my thing, like I like to ride really high performance boards too, but I want a board that has flow, right? So I don't want to have to stand up like on a typical thruster. You stand up, and the thing wants to go slow, and then you have to like pump to kind of make it go fast, yeah. um, which you do obviously, but it's not as fun. I want a board that the minute you stand up, you can kind of get to the top of the wave, and the thing wants the high line to go fast. And then you just, it's like controlling your speed rather than creating that speed. Yeah. yeah. Which I think less, is pretty less cool. Less struggle and less work. Yeah, just, yeah, less effort. Energy. Yeah. Less effort. Yeah. I think that's the way you need to uh, kind of look forward to it. Right. To not like work all the time, like you pop up and then try to immediately like pump and yeah. do this like hops and stuff. It's like just that classic idea of like, um, like, doing it but less but still achieving the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that's what style is, I guess, right? Like I, I, I'm actually working towards Yeah. I, I it it, it, it um, clicked not a while ago. Mm. I used to be that I always have to pump. Yeah. Like, right to pop up. I need that pump, first pump. Now I'm like chilling. I'm like I'm popping out it's like all right if I have enough speed I'm good. If I don't yeah. maybe. And it's a matter of just like figuring out how to like use different parts of the wave too, right? Like obviously you could pump through everything and you really go really fast, but if you can kind of get up and kind of just go to a high line and get the thing on to trim, especially in a board like this, you'll get all this trim speed that you don't even need to pump. You know what I mean? You gotta get through that first like 
steep, like especially here, like kind of walled section. Mm -hmm. And then you can go really start serving because you're going to have all that speed growing down up high. Like get up high, trim out, and then as you come back off of that, then then that's like your pump, but it's just like a slower, like lower your pump. You know? But sometimes a lot of speed it's bad too. So yeah, 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 you should not really. <laughs> <laughs> In our short waves, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Barrel dodging because you're going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> then you got some burners. Do you have a bunch of burners in stock too? Those are, those are also a really kind of good seller for Trimcraft. Um, kind of a do everything board, you know? Like kind of the short board for the guy who doesn't really want to ride a short board. Um, they're curvy enough so when it's like small, like waist high, they'll, they'll go pretty good. Um, and then they're kind of pulled in enough that it's six feet or as big as you're going to want to serve. You know, they have a battle power, they have the rocker. They're, you know, yeah, I had 6.3 burner, but I'm, I'm so bummed that I um, let it go, but I, I, because I had so many, and then I yeah. had to downsize. Totally. So I actually wanted to have back that 6.3, I'm going to reach out to like the person, because in the 3 plus, mm. it was so great, like, for sure. Yeah, I think they, the, the smaller ones particularly, I think, need a little bit of weight, a little bit of weight. Mm -hmm. I, when I spoke to Ryan last time, he was here, Yeah. he's like, oh, if you were like on the 7 or something like that, you would be able to go. Because yeah, the, the, the bigger they get, the more they kind of expand, like the more curve there is in them. Um, so anytime you put curve in a board, it's going to make it turn a bit more. So the, the, I always, it's, it's a funny way to put it. The smaller ones almost end up being like step uppy, mm -hmm. and then the longer ones end up being like eggy. You know, yeah. so the eggy ones will work in just about everything. The smaller ones need a bit more push. We just got in like, um, oh, this one looks awesome. First diamond. So this diamond. This is the other board that I was riding the most. Like if I, I said you have in, in, uh, just a clear black, uh, clear. Yeah, clear. Um, a five six. Yeah. Um, John Simon, like I was saying earlier, is like this young, like savant from um, Ventura, California. The kid's 21 years old and. I'll put him against a lot of people from a shaping perspective. I um, mean, he's doing all these kind of like, he shapes for Trimcraft a lot, just scrubs out some love machine stuff too. And then um, his own brand is just Simon Shapes. And he's like, uh, he's kind of Ryan Birch esque in the way that he's a really, really good server. Um, and he's got all these kind of interesting ideas. So, all his, a lot of his Simon Shapes brand stuff, especially like what he personally rides, ends up being like pretty experimental. Um, just trying to push the limits of like what you do on server, right? Um, we kind of know the rules, like you can't go shorter than this, you can't go longer than this, you can't go narrower than that, but there is some like leeway within that stuff. And then just taking ideas that like other people have done and like spinning them into something new. So this is like something that he, we went to Mexico last spring and he brought a bunch of like kind of weird boards with them. And uh, he made, it's like a double bump, diamond nose, diamond tail, quad fin. Um, and this is like one of his favorite ones that he brought. And it's got a really kind of interesting bottom on it. Um, originally designed by this guy Jeff Alexander, and then kind of taken over by um, this guy John Lelane. Um, it's called an inverted V, so like a lot of boards have V in them, right? So it's like a, it's convex. So like it literally like it's two flat panels that come down. It's, it's obviously it's exaggerating how I'm using the hands. But um, V gives you this kind of turnover from rail to rail, right? It's two panels that the board wants to kind of slide off of. Um, and then there's, so an inverted V is, is it's the exact opposite, it's a concave version. Um, so it's literally like two flat panels that come straight to the stringer. Um, which is like pretty similar to like a single concave board, which is a pretty standard short board kind of concave. Um, I always really like a single concave and like short boardy stuff, but I think they need a bit of wave to work, you know, because um, a normal single concave is like a curved concave. And uh, in short boards, Particularly, but I guess in all boards, you just need them to create a lift, and that's what gives you all that speed to kind of go. Yeah. So on a on a single concave that has all that curve in it, the water wants to grip that curve, right? So it takes longer for the lift to be created and actually like like get up to speed and go. Um, with the inverted V, which all these guys in the past have found, and John's really kind of found it. I'm kind of blown away by it. Rather than having that curve where the water grips, because it's just a flat panel inverted V, the water splays off of it really, really quick. So the minute you stand up your feet, the thing goes whoop, goes lift, and then it's going a million miles an hour. So it gives you like all that cool feelings of a single concave in like a way 
to see more, I guess, more user-friendly package. It works in a lot of different, a lot of other where, ways. Where is that spot? Like, you think, like, well, kind of through most of the board. So it has an inverted V entry. There's a channel now, right? Like, yeah. Right deep channel here. Which is like, but it, rather than being curved, like typically it is that like straight panel kind of thing. So that lets water flow. That's pretty aggressive here too. And yeah. I don't see much, actually, I never seen this kind of shape on the on, on, on the nose. Ryan Lovelace doesn't so. a lot on his super snakes. Like, but not kind of this deep. I think it's flat, it's flat by the better. Yeah. And then um, Ryan Birch does them a bunch like this. They're probably almost as aggressive, but they're just kind of like a, they're a more distinct kind of panel. So this lets water, like the, even from a paddling perspective, it, it, it like, water wants to just flow straight down the bottom of the board then, right? As you're paddling, moving anything, water's like getting channeled down there. So you uh, feel like it paddles faster? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, wow. yeah. These things paddle, like, for how small they are, they paddle like a dream, because it's just water wants to go down the center. Because so, you figure in a normal short water, it's pretty flat, so you're like, kind of pushing water. Even, even in a fish, it usually like, has a bit of V. Mm -hmm. So you're, it's kind of sitting in the water and pushing water out of the way, where this one, it's just the water like finding, like water wants to find the path of least resistance, right? So yeah. the, the path of least resistance is down this channel, so the water just wants to flow down there immediately. Which is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. And then the inverted V is through this kind of back sound. You can see it like through like a, but see, you can see it all through here, right? Like, mm -hmm. so it's a typical kind of a short board style, like concave. Um, I guess it comes with a lot of speed. Tons. Yeah. A lot of speed, a lot of control. Um, they're just, they're really cool. You know, it's it's a full on short board, really. You know, at the end of the day, like, like a slightly squatty short board, yeah, but it's, yeah, I, I can, it's yeah. super high performance. You can do anything you want. What weight would you surf on this? Like this particular one? Mine's a tiny bit smaller than that, but um, for me, anything, as long as it's kind of like punchy, from waist high to, as big as it gets, because mine's only five six, I guess, but like waist high to six foot. Two so it's five seven. Yeah. Can Same kind of thing, like a little bit knee high, I think. Maybe knee high might be a little. I mean, if it's punchy and it's got a little bit of push to it, then like sure. a two foot nine seconds, something like yeah, yeah, like yeah, totally good shape. Yeah, they would totally. How does it growl? Like, Crap, you serve with a little bit more size. It's all right. I mean, I've ridden them in just about everything. You know what I mean? I, I don't. If it's if it's under waist high. I tend to ride something big because I'm kind of lazy, I guess. I yeah. don't like to gravel that much, uh -huh. but it goes in a lot of ways. In good form here? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, this one's two and three eighths, but again, like it keeps a bit of foam through this kind of front zone, so it paddles well. And I think with that nose concave for the nose channel, um, it definitely lends to like the paddle ability. But definitely like a more, you know, it's not for everybody. It's, it's a short board for guys who don't want to ride a short board, even more so than the burner kind of thing is. You know, it's like, it's very high performance but really kind of cool. Tempting. So tempting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know like if I, if it would be different if it was like a 20, like a 20 and a half, it would be easier, do you think? But you would probably lose some, some of the- You'd lose some of the performance aspects of it. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. It should be like short, like gravelly short board kind of um, jams, I think. Cool too, like even with the fin set up, like mm -hmm. I think nowadays like a lot of quads, um, they're like more of a rail quad and a lot of like fishy kind of things, mm -hmm. um, which is cool because you're doing that split keel idea and giving all this downline speed. But if you look at like short 40 stuff, even like if you look at like the stuff that like Slater rides, right? Mm -hmm. His quads, um, the rear fins are a lot further in mm -hmm. um, and further from, you know, further from the front fins and further from the rails. And that gives you a lot more pivot. Mm -hmm. So that gives you more of that kind of thrustery feel would still have a quad, right? So anytime you put fins in the center, it's gonna to wanna to pivot like on a pendulum. Mm -hmm. um, anytime fins are on the rails, it's gonna to wanna to project like down the line. So this gives you like the speed of the quad with a lot more pivot um, than a typical quad would, you know? So faster than like a thruster would be, but more pivot than a, quad, than, than a typical quad would have. Wow, I'd love to try it. I have, I have two, you can try one. <laughs> 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 Do you think I can borrow one to, to try it? Yeah, they're kind of stuffed in my U-Haul right now, but yeah, oh. at some point I can get you one for sure. Yeah. I have a 5.8, like twin plus trailer, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That'd probably be pretty fun for you. Not the quad one? No, it, 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 it's a twin fin with like a, a small like mini uh -huh. trailer kind of thing. Uh -huh. Definitely a better way board, you know? That one, better way board. Yeah. Than this one? Yeah. The quads just come every day.
But he's making me a new one, a varial one too, so you can try the, the old one. I mean, I'm kind of not ready for the performance of words. Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? I feel like most, even the performance stuff that we sell is like still like friendly. I sure. I wonder if I want to go get a short word, I want the short word to be friendly in terms of conditions too. Yeah. So because I'm not getting three food plays every day. And, yeah, 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 and totally. then like even once a month, I get three, food, three to four. Yeah. Usually one to two. Uh, that's what I'm thinking we'll be able to get. One to two into one to two foot base, like some turns. I mean, yeah, probably, but I think it's also, I mean, it's different perspectives in different ways. Like, to me, it's all about like the right surfboard for the right day, too. You know what I mean? Like, I have a good amount of surfboards, I know. <laughs> you probably have more than you want to talk about. Um, you don't always have to have a board that works in everything. Yeah. You know, like, I have like kind of distinct groups of surfboards, personally, like, long, a couple longer things that when it's really small, I ride that. Um, some fishy stuff when it's kind of in that medium size where I just want to cruise a bit more, I ride that. And then boards that are made for good waves, you know? And there, I have boards that like are the best boards I've ever had that I ride three times a year at home. But if I go away and it's this big every day, it's, you know, I ride it the same surfboard every day for 10 days straight kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's like, it's cool to have something that goes in everything, but it's also cool to like have boards for the right conditions, you know? Because we do get a lot of different waves here, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's from, ankle high to double overhead and you know not everything's gonna work well and everything. Yeah totally totally. Oh great yeah this is very special. I, I actually I so in love now with this experimental shoes uh, alternative crops. I feel like they're they're really fun. Yeah I mean, they're, they're something too for sure. You know something new you learn when you write them like every time you go out surfing like oh, wow like this board does this magic. <laughs> you know, I, I turn much quicker on this one. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I think we're in a good place, like just globally with surfboards, is that there's so many different boards and there's everything's kind of cool and everything's accepted and you know, except for maybe softboards. No, <laughs> get that out. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, everything. No, it's cool. Everything like has a place. You know what I mean? You can ride whatever you want and enjoy whatever you want. I think that's I think that's important for people. You know, but just know like where you should be too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. If you've been surfing for six don't months, don't get a 511 shortboard and think it's gonna work for you because it's probably not. Yeah, totally. And uh, don't bring like, I guess, you know, this kind of board like on the uh, ankle slap or day. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, and yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. blame the board that it's not working. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> everything, there's like a quote from Terry Fitzgerald and it's like everything works, some just work better than others. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, that's true. Do you have a uh, Will's Fish in 5.9 size? Someone asked me. I think I yeah, do. the back one. No, Someone asked it. me on 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 the, on, um, on YouTube channel. Ah. Yeah, you know the one, right? They think the one I have in barrel form has a different curve than the uh, the one from the Um. There's probably slight slight different slight intricacies that change a little bit. Um, but they should be pretty darn similar. You know. Oh, oh this one is has. A little bit better, uh, different curve here. In the rail. And there, I think this one has slightly more, more volume. More yeah. More well, I think that, you know, and, and that's, with the love machine stuff, it's like their machine cut scanned copies of these specific pores that, that Ryan has shaped. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't change, right? The dims are the dims. They should be perfectly this. Like, if, if we do one here and you got yours from the West Coast, they should look exactly the same. Where I think the wheels fish from Trimcraft and pretty much all the Trimcraft models, because they all are hand shaped, um, and it's kind of there are like slight discretions for the shaper. Um, yeah, because it's not a machine. Yeah, a and all the elements, yeah. all the elements are exactly the same, but they do change. You know, kind of just some you know thicknesses in the rails, like how things are foiled and stuff like that. And Most of them they come in few. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll do varied ones too, but yeah, ninety-nine percent of what we do is few. Barrels great. Did you ship barrels here? Okay. We get them, yeah. We have some we're working on now. Mm -hmm. um, just a, it's a pretty good price increase, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it is incredible stuff. I mean, it, I have a couple of burial boards, and I have boards that are five years old that still feel like new surfboards. So you're getting most of your boards now in barrel? <laughs> kind of, yeah. I kind of have like a procedure for myself. It's like, Try it first, probably in poly. If it's something like new and different that I haven't ridden, and um, if it's pretty good, then I just 
keep the poly thing. And if it's like extra special, a lot of times I'll have it done under it. Mm -hmm. You know, like as the poly one, you know, especially the shortboard stuff that I have it, it shortboard stuff's glass light. So if you're surfing a lot, like they, they're, they're not disposable the way we do things because we try to keep them like a little bit more to them, but they, you know, they're consumable. They do get kind of beat up over time. Mm -hmm. um, so as the one kind of gets to the end of its life cycle, and if it's something I really love, then yeah, I'll have it done very well for sure. Yeah. I still have your Super Snake. Yeah. And it was shaped. I did a search. I went through uh, the Instagram yeah. all the way down, and I found the post from 2016 yeah. uh, about Super Snake. And the color is still the same. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. It didn't change. Very cool looks, like that. Yeah. It looks. It looks like just out of, you know, the shop. <laughs> yeah. And they just don't. Poly boards eventually wear out, right? Like the there, there is a lot of flex characteristics to surfboards, and um, you won't have that pop. Like, yeah, you know, I think varial boards feel like a brand new surfboard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have I wrote one I guess years ago, but like they, you can have a thing for ten years, and I swear, in ten years it's still gonna feel like a brand new surfboard, which I think you can't say about any other construction as far as I'm concerned. You know, poly stuff wears out, epoxy stuff can get kind of yellowed and brittle and interesting, mm -hmm. like weird, you know. But varial is just like it's something cool. Yeah. It's worth the money if you have a magic surfboard. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Why, why did you actually uh, decide to let that go? I forgot the, the super snake. I had a newer one. You had a newer uh, one. Yeah, another varial one actually. Um, oh, you went smaller, right? I went narrower. Narrower. Yeah, I went really, really narrow on my super snakes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of why I only run them. Really it was good already kind of narrow before nineteen yeah. and uh, half. I think. I think the stuff I'm riding now is like eighteen and a half. Wow. Like full of shortboard stuff. Okay. It was like a weird thing. I was in, <laughs> <laughs> I was in Madeira. Uh -huh. um, and the wow, waves were zero big, right? Yeah, I was. It was pretty big, yeah. But the waves were really I good. Think it's always big. I, I watched the documentary about yeah. the era. I was like, they're like, yeah, this is like a small day, and they see like it's like half high day, like it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's insane. Well, yeah. so I was there, and Derek Dizzy and Bryce Young were there, mm -hmm. and Bryce Young was riding these Ryan Birch boards, um, asymmetric things, and uh, he's obviously an incredible server, but they're so narrow, like his. They were like probably eighteen. And the turnover, like from rail to rail, what he was doing, obviously he's a better server, but uh, the way that they moved, like kind of blew my mind. And I was like, whoa, like there's something to going this narrow. So I immediately had Ryan make me um, a new like shortboard style one. I think, that, I think that one's 18 and a half. And uh, it was immediately like, like the ones before that were like magic and this was like, it just took it to like kind of the next level. So then I had to make me a step up one. I, and I think, I'm thinking back, the step up one is like six foot by, I think it's 18. Mm -hmm. Extremely narrow, but in good waves, it's like, it's so sensitive and it's like, it, it's so precise, it's insane. But in, uh, your super strength is that that was like 5 foot 11 by 19 and a half, something like that. Yeah. And then you call it like as a, a step up. But for me, I was able to push it one foot surf here on yeah. the beach. Totally. And I, I was surprised. When I, when I saw the post now, yeah. like, step up, I don't know, it kind of was gravelry too. I think it depends on, on, depends on, yeah, the, on the person and stuff too. You know, like I think like my normal size everyday super steak is like 5'8". Mm -hmm. so, and I feel like because it has that kind of round nose, and it, so it has the rate like, you know, if you, you, to, if you put to be three inches on top of that, that's probably what the length actually would be. You know what I mean? Because it has like that effective rail line of something longer. Mm -hmm. So at 5'11", that makes the thing like a six three, six two, six three, which for me would be kind of a step up thing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but still still going well yeah. in the in the small stuff too. For sure. I I love it. <laughs> I, get, I like this. <laughs> Just got a bunch of Jim Phillips boards in, Phillips. which are pretty beautiful. Jim's um he lives in Encinitas, California. He actually learned to shape um, in New Jersey um, at like the first surfboard factory that ever existed here. Um, it was Challenger Eastern surfboards. Mm -hmm. um, so he's got all these crazy ties here. Um, and we've kind of been friends for a long time. He's, uh, he's in the 70s, shaped some of the most beautiful longboards on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, so it was cool, yeah. So on my way back cross country, I stopped in, hung out with him for a bit, picked up 60 boards, and they're incredible. He's got like pretty much a wood shop and surfboard factory. He cuts all his own blanks, puts all his own stringers in. Um, hi, hi, I think that's really cool. Awesome. Yeah, I, I had one nine six, mm. and then it was so problematic to get out of my apartment. So. Yeah, yeah. And then I got the Ecclesia, and I got ah. problem solved. Yeah, longboards, <laughs> longboards in New York yeah. City just they're pretty good. Garage or you know some storage. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so far. And we, 
Yeah, I guess you leave by, if you leave right from the beach, well, sure. it's easy yeah. to, to make For it. sure. Cool. Yeah, so that was Phil from Light Surf Shop. Uh, check out uh, how people can find you. Um, GlideSurfCo.com or uh, GlideSurfCo on Instagram. Instagram. Yep. Yeah, come check it out. They have a variety of things here for surf, you know, for surfing. Or port shorts, new wetsuits. Yeah. By the way, that on you. Same, uh, right? Hyper Freak? Yeah. It's insane. It's so good. It's my favorite wetsuit yeah. now. And that, it's pretty rad too because it's not even like their highest end model. Yeah. It's like kind of a really great I mean, price for point. But for $400. Yeah. This is, you don't need any other wetsuit, honestly. Like, That's what I've been wearing. It's, I've been it's wearing so it. Warm, yeah. It's so light. It's so straight. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm I think I'm going to get like a 3.2 and 4.3. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then maybe another 5.4. There, uh, I The hooded 4.3 is like my favorite thing. It's as light as a 3.2, mm -hmm. um, but it's warm as a 4.3. And then the hood makes sense. Like I get cold really quick, so to have a little bit more wetsuit. Like the minute I get cold in a 3.2, like I'd rather sweat than be cold. You know what I mean? So I put a hooded 4.3 on. That's yeah. what I wear all winter in Mexico. Yeah. It's good, right? Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like my reels, please subscribe. This will really help this channel to grow. And if you have any questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for your support. And until next time, bye. Woo.